good morning, buenos días, good afternoon, buenas tardes to everyone. Thank you for joining us today for this uh, Spark edition with our Colombian member Banco Cop Central. Ronnie, thank you very much for being our host today and for presenting uh, this uh, Spark, uh, which uh, I think it has brought a lot of interest to understand what are the lessons learned from COVID, the COVID crisis. But as you said during our talk this week, it's more uh, on how to boost the digital development and what were your huge advancements after the, the crisis. A small um, practical detail, why are we working with Zoom today? Because Zoom offers a tool that is Zoom with interpretation. So Ronnie will be speaking in Spanish to us today. Um, and there will be English translations for the non-Spanish attendees. You will see below, uh, there is a map next to share your screen. Normally you would see a, a world map. Which, on which is written below, it's written interpretation. You can choose the English uh, channel or the Spanish channel. So um, Ronnie will be speaking in, in Spanish. We have Maria Claudia who's an interpreter today who will be, be translating into English. For the Spanish speaker, you can of course choose the channel, the Spanish Spanish, the Spanish channel, sorry, for which you will be hearing Ronnie is speaking in Spanish, and for which you will be hearing also then the questions in English translated in Spanish. Lo voy a repetir rápidamente en español para que todo el mundo pueda entender por qué trabajamos hoy con Zoom with Interpretation. Abajo de la página, de vuestra página Zoom, hay un dibujo del mundo. Está escrito interpretación. La presentación de hoy será dada en español por Ronnie y las personas que hablan español pueden escoger el canal español, Spanish. Entonces oirán Ronnie hablar en español y también cuando habrá que preguntas o habrán preguntas en inglés, oirán la traducción del inglés al español debajo de Spanish, del canal Spanish. Los que, para que no es necesario la interpretación, porque entienden tal vez las dos lenguas, inglés y español, pueden quedarse en off y oirán todo ese evento en las versiones originales de los diálogos. Um, I hope that this was clear. Espero que esto fue claro para todo el mundo y que todo el mundo pueda aprovechar de ese Spark dado en español y traducido in English. I hope that everyone can enjoy the Spark presented in Spanish and translated into English. Roni, the floor is yours. Thank you. Bueno, muchas gracias por la invitación. Entonces, pues, eh, buenos días, buenas tardes para todos. Eh, bueno, eh, COP Central. En... COP Central to help the cooperatives uh, on the post-COVID stage, designed a digital strategy so that the cooperatives can have tools and uh, are able to compete with traditional banks in digital topics. The cooperative sector in Colombia lags behind in technological topics and COP Central, even though it's the second tier bank, it has a main objective and has created business lines of a traditional bank focused to providing financial services to the cooperatives and another line which is focused on digital banking. And it is being leveraged it is leveraging itself uh, on non-financial entities in order to arrive or be able to penetrate the first tier banks. These are fintech 
uh, entities or startups, and they could also be institutions that only provide credit uh, or lending uh, subjects. It was created as a hybrid platform where our technological focus includes banking as a service. It's a leader in a way of doing digital banking uh, in cooperation with other institutions. With the boom of the fintechs, we've seen that many communities have become specialized and that there is a certain penetration of the market and acceptance uh, of the fintechs, which are friendlier than the traditional banks. So our uh, technological infrastructure is changing, trying to join this new way of doing banking in Colombia. It is uh, quite new. Uh, of not contacting the customer in a direct manner, but through a fintech. We, our commercial strategy is to have a bank, a white label bank where all of the commercialization of the products are done by the fintech. The fintechs or the cooperative would be the one that creates the customer loyalty, create a value proposal that's more interesting and maybe more adequate to uh, for the community or for the market niche that's being worked on and it is supported on a banking technology uh, so that they financial businesses or services there are products that are not or that don't appear in COP Central's books. They appear 100% on the cooperative, but the technology is COP Central's, and this helps to earn fees in portfolio lending and allow them to grow and compete uh, against traditional banks, which are also becoming digital. The new banks are also coming into Colombia, such as New Bank. So we're working a lot on that topic. In Colombia, this is an image that was published in a newspaper, in a well-known newspaper in Colombia. We see that in the banking as a service model in Colombia, COP Central is the leader in Colombia. We came out with a new wallet called Te Paga. It has payment services of uh, everything, public utilities and, and so forth. And within this e-wallet, there's a service from Banco Cop Central, which is we open a bank, uh, a savings account. So we load the e-wallet and within that e-wallet, we provide Cop Central provides them a service. This was the first e-wallet in Colombia that had this open banking service. As you can see, these are the financial institutions that are leading the topic of digital banking in Colombia. And uh, through this, we're being able to cope with COVID. You have the large banks, Banco Colombia, Da Vivienda, Banco de Bogota, the Stock Exchange of Colombia. And these are the new business lines that are coming outside of the traditional banks. Neki is a platform. It's an e-wallet of Banco Colombia, Da Vivienda Plata. is an e-wallet of a well-positioned bank in Colombia, La Vivienda, Ascenso belongs to the stock exchange. And these are the different alliances or partnerships that are being done with the fintechs. The idea is that in this digital business line, we have our own cooperative e-wallet. We're working on that. But meanwhile, we're working on, on the fintechs integration into a fintech ecosystem. We have already grown. We have more or less 24 fintechs in an economy that's providing support to the cooperative 
sector and it's broadening their network. And in addition, the traditional banks see us more as a threat and we see them more as an opportunity to grow and to create digital ecosystems that are more robust. This is our ecosystem of digital infrastructure on the base. We have the bank with its bank core. We have all the logic, the business logic. We do the data management, bank security. And what we do is create interfaces for payments, for accounts, for cards, for consumers. Here, it's all related to security, to the management of business intelligence tools, big data, and we're creating a sandbox so that the cooperative institutions can access technological innovation and uh, are able to test their tools and innovations before they go out or launch themselves into the market. We have a secure web interface. We work a lot on security and data security. We have uh, a subject of monitoring uh, of all of the systems so as to prevent vulnerations or violations. And here we have all the different services. If you don't have a license to use them, or if you do have a license and you want to work through our banking platform, we have uh, the apps, we have cooperatives, fintech startups, we have some banks that don't have the financial capacity to purchase a processor or a a card authorizer or means of payment authorizer, they can work through us. And all of this would be direct connection. It's extremely fast. Uh, the customer can connect to the system, offer the product. The new institutions that want to come into the country are doing it through COP Central. So we've grown. Uh, quite a bit and the subject is not only cooperative and with cooperatives it's a subject of cooperatives with non-cooperative institutions that want to come in uh, and know about the cooperative values cooperate with us help us grow and to compete against traditional institutions this is how we've matured in the digital area. We are in a level three maturity in digital transformation. We live within this digital environment. We have an, a digital experience. We began by developing it at the level one, which is a banking platform. That's the banking core developed by Coop Central. And it only does processing of transactions and of scoring. We also do data processing and this uh, travels to databases at level two, it migrates. And there we have digital processes. And th this is where the interaction takes place with the solutions, with the banking solutions. This is fully developed with that. We have an interaction with the fintechs and the solutions uh, connect through APIs and through other tools that we have for the e-wallets to connect directly with the banking services. So we have uh, fintechs uh, to be able to shop your groceries, to deal with uh, purchases, selling homes or vehicles or technology, financial education. So the bank already has a 100% digital mentality and we've evolved and have organizational agility that's 100% 
digital, the bank does not need uh, physical offices anymore to offer 100% digital products. We keep the physical offices for our traditional customers. Uh, and of those who are directly associated to the bank and to the cooperative. These are the pillars we work on. It's related to digital banking. We work on subjects of being able to operate without any delay or our restriction. All of the financial services, payment means, savings accounts, credit cards, disbursements are available uh, seven days a week for 24 hours. Uh, our customers don't need to leave home. They can do everything from their full cell phones or computers. We ensure the security of the data. This is very important, data security. All of the data are safe in our platform. The only owner of the data is the customer or the client. Uh, he is the only one who can authorize the treatment of their data and they uh, have 100% of governance over their data. We have accessible solutions. They're flexible and low cost. We've done large alliances or partnerships to be able to reduce transactional costs. The cooperatives can have access to franchises like Visa or MasterCards. And we do this through uh, cloud uh, solutions and our infrastructure is in-house. All of the solutions we've developed are our end to net to end, I'm sorry, and all of them are APIs. It is all related to SSTP solutions. If we want a transaction in real time, these transactions could use end bags and we don't need the client to process it online. The customer or the client has to feel trust. We do this in in blocked type of development services. So I have like three transactional blocks, one for current accounts, another one for savings accounts, another one for debit uh, uh, cards, another one for credit cards. So when I'm developing something in one of the blocks or one of the cubes and I have to make a change, I have to bring down all the platform of the bank to do the upgrade of the version and leave the ecosystem. What I do is maintain the bank online and only bring down the portion that I have to upgrade. I, I bring it out of line for 15 minutes. Let's say I take it out of line and I do the upgrade. I then load it up again and the bank, 99% of the bank was available for the customers. And we also like to be proximate to our clients, to be close to them. We try to, uh, the directors of the bank or the senior management provide service directly to the senior management of the fintechs. We don't have any uh, commercial advisors making a bridge between the services. So we expect that those fintechs associated to COP Central also work with us in this uh, closely knit manner in cooperative uh, work in being agile in the development of products. We also work in certain products together with them. So we've uh, really been able to develop very good ideas for this type of strategies. This is a system that's uh, very innovative. We have created a combination between the traditional banks and digital banks we're uh, now having new players and the idea is that the non-financial institutions are able to create platforms for their 
cost for new bank customers that are personalized. They are experts in market penetration in a very natural way. And we see that in platforms like TikTok, which is one of the fintechs that works with the bank, all the money that uh, goes out to the influencers are disbursed through uh, an e-wallet for payments. So we do it through that type of innovation. And this is the graph and the first portion of the first base, you see the platform of banking as a service. In the middle, we have the non-financial institution, which are the e-wallets. And here we work with several uh, ones in the market. We have three right now. Paybook uh, called us to come into Colombia with a financial wallet. Behind that, uh, uh, the bank would be behind that. And then the final consumers are first. And they do, or there is an interface between them and with the fintechs that are specialized in market penetration. And behind them, we are, let's say, hidden, and we are providing the services and leasing the, the banking license. We're renting the buy banking license. These are the seven elements we work on to consolidate this topic. The idea is to have a strong ecosystem. We work on the subject of infrastructure in two lines, the in-house and in the cloud infrastructure. We work on security. Uh, topics. We believe that the second pandemics would be the pandemics of cybersecurity. There are breaches, there are many attacks, cyber attacks, and I think they double, they, they, they quadrupled uh, the cybernetic attacks, we're doing training for the users who are the ones having the greatest vulnerability. We have all of the technology to counter arrest any cybernetic attack, but people continue to be the weakest link. And so we're trying to uh, overcome that through training, all of the subject of the cloud of uh, APIs, the data, the ecosystem services, we work on a topic uh, which is the management of capacity and demand in relation to the products we're developing. We are doing management of infrastructure where we analyze, we generate reports, we teach how to them how to develop or how to work in-house. We do the management of demand according to priorities and we are able to to communicate if we can or cannot do it. And after we do the analysis, we do the management of competition at the people level because all of the infrastructure and the technology is operated by people, even though it's automatic or robotized or automized, there's always someone monitoring the process and we're always analyzing the people, evaluating their competencies and developing them and uh, making sure that the competencies are upfront in the system. Uh, we're always uh, trying to manage change and constantly learning from our mistakes and from lessons learned you learn more from your mistakes uh, than from a system that never fails. Uh, if it never fails, it becomes suspicious. <laughs> this is what we're working on in technology to become more robust. We have a hybrid infrastructure. We have three internal centers of processing. 
one which is the main in-house center, another one in the cloud, and a center uh, for processing in-house. That's the third center. We've seen that the institutions that have gone 100% to the cloud have had problems. A little time ago in Colombia, there was a, a, a crash of Facebook and Instagram who are in the cloud, and they affected the the users in Colombia, they were out for eight hours because most of their operations are in the cloud. So what we want to do is to make a hybrid system. We have services in the cloud, of course, but uh, we have an alternative uh, processing center, which is an external main center and it's in-house. We're working on hyperconnectivity and communications. We are increasingly needing speed in communications to wait for three or four minutes to get an answer from an app is really uh, something that puts your hair on end. So we're working on the subject of having hyperconvergent connections. This is a change in the way of thinking of infrastructure of hardware. Hardware are complete with integrated processing. We and microservice developing, we're working on a core that only does processing and a new interface with the user. We have an interface with the web operations to work with uh, the bank in a digital manner 100% from any part of the world. We're also working on big data and we're working on that based on an analysis of the data, how we've structured the data to normatize it, normalize it and to uh, get rid of that trash that fills the databases with information. More or less 80% of the data saved in the systems is, is really trash or noise that does not allow us to do a sort of analysis. And we're looking at the capacity uh, that we require to be able to keep that data secure using processors that help us to process all of that data. And of course, speed, because if we can, conjugate all of those four elements where we're going to be able to generate a big data that's efficient and business intelligence that's in also efficient. The subject of artificial intelligence is a, a subject in technology that has become obsolete. We're talking about machine learning now. Everything has evolved towards machine learning and the subject has evolved to LAS, which goes beyond uh, machine learning. And that has not been developed very well because we've not been able to reach the processing levels and speed that are adequate to be able to do this uh, big learning topic. That would be like the fifth revolution in technological matters, everything related to open banking management and banking as a service, what products we're working on to offer the different cooperatives, all of the last and big data top topics and business intelligence uh, to do analysis or to just provide the information and teach them how to analyze it. All the subject of approvals of digital approvals online, all of the topic of online loans or credits of delivering saving products to the customer online and all related to the renovation of the course because the ones used by the cooperatives are obsolete. The sector is working with a financial core that's updated uh, and it's uh, of the banks and it will allow us to do open banking that they 
would be able to integrate and be very operational. And we're always thinking about the new uh, technological cycle that is coming up. I think that they will be, uh, the transitions will be more agile and faster in, in technological matters. And the new technologies will be implemented very quickly. And those who are not prepared will have to lose uh, competitivity. And we're thinking about this all from the digital perspective. These are our partners or allies. All of these allies, what we do is that we act as the sponsor or leading bank for these products that are outsourced to the cooperatives with lower costs. We pay the large costs and we leverage ourselves on the incentives provided by the institutions themselves so that the cost of integration of the cooperatives are lower. For example, Visa, to go into Visa and into any network you'd need like a million dollars spending to be able to issue just one card with us, you can do it with just $30,000. So it is a very big opportunities for our cooperatives to be able to go up to the same level as the banks. So we're working on interbanking digital solutions. We're working with Olympia in Central, we have all the digital lending um, securities that are dematerialized. We have the subject of Desewang, which is uh, an institution, Desewal, which is an institution of the stock exchange. In Visa, we're working with them. And we issue loans, commerce, and we're working on international drafts, card through or card to card. We're a visa a champion. We're the leader of the banks that use Visa Direct. We implemented two lines for e-wallets and four lines for direct placement of credit cards in cooperatives. All the time we're accompanying the cooperatives in digitalizing their portfolio. And this is a 100% subject of security and we provide support in all of the development matters at the cooperatives. With MasterCard is the same thing. We're seeing all the different issues. We are direct issuers for debit cards. We are working on cross-border topics. These are basically uh, drafts and remittances at the international level. It's not card to card, but account to account. And here I can make an international draft without requiring a card like Visa is doing with Visa Direct. So all of this will be under the rails of MasterCard. We implemented uh, something for for credit, a bin for credit uh, through the cooperatives for socioeconomic strata one and two to be able to provide uh, low amount credit cards with uh, allowances of maybe up to $300 from 100 to 300 dollars that have fixed quotas that could be accessible to this uh, different socioeconomic strata. So they would leave aside the, the type of drop-by-drop um, -drop credits. There is a technological process for Visa and MasterCard with them. We created a topic of the processing of multiple company credits and multiple companies' debit cards and payment cards for multiple companies. They connect technologically with a bank and Visa in a direct connection. And with MasterCard, we created a program of um, loyalty 
in multiple companies so each cooperative can work on points and miles and all of these topics we do um, management with visa and mastercard of acquiring uh, of acquisitions co-op central can manage acquisitions the uh, business companies can open a card and sell their products through visa and mastercard but through an acquisition using Coop Central as a sponsor, and we're working on the topic of risk of monitoring plus, plus where I could do the verification and the traceability of the transactions in real time. With Credivanco, we continue working on uh, acquisition of Visa and MasterCard while we uh, complete our connection with MasterCard. We're working on something called a co-pilot for fintechs. And with a chip that you place in your car, you can go through the different tolls and the tolls are, the payment are discounted from your credit card. You wouldn't have to pay the toll in cash. So the idea is to sort of change the mentality uh, of uh, paying physically at the tolls, but uh, to pay through credit cards automatically. Those institutions who don't want to have a debit card or credit card can do it through a QR uh, bank. We are also into the tokenization matters, digital credits at the points of sale from the different shops. The people who wants to buy a, an article, let's say they fell in love with a tennis shoe in a shop and they don't have a way to pay it through their data phone, they can request a low amount loan. And in five minutes, they will get their loan and their product. And we're also doing on digital onboarding so that the different shops can do their acquisitions through credit or debit cards. They can uh, turn their shop into a digital one and not only doing physical operations through a data phone, we're giving, we're providing a payment uh, aisle through the internet so that they can uh, move their business online and become digital. So we're doing the digitalization of the, from the shops themselves, from the consumer and from the non-financial and, and the financial entities. This is the, what our value offer in debit cards for cooperatives. We give them the application, the savings deposit, the authorizer. We do all the billing or regulatory reports the management of the clients, the management of cards, how to manage incentives to generate all of the compensation and clearance. We generate statistics, we generate data so they can do an analysis of the market. And it's not only a physical card, but it's also a digital card the savings deposits uh, are at COP Central, at the bank, who is the one authorized to carry out the uptake of the resources through what we call low amount deposits, which is regulated for financial institutions. When it becomes regulated for cooperatives, what we want to do is to target this service uh, as a product to the cooperative of the cooperative or of the fintech. This is the core and authorization of credit cards. And we help them uh, do the same thing. The difference is that the issuance of the card is through the cooperative. The credit risk is of the cooperative. The resources are of the cooperative. And we get the fees, the interbanking fees, the plastic is the image of the cooperative. We give them the platform. We help them in innovation topics, how to 
manage their portfolio, how to do the reports to the supervisory agency or to the regulatory agency, how to manage the cards and plastics, how to do the logistics of the delivery of the cards, to manage the statistics. We do all of the integration uh, topics with the core, and this is our value proposal. It's not only to deliver tools, uh, technological tools to the institutions, but to provide support from our experience, from our operations. So we do consultancy for the implementation. We do technological support for integration. We do support from the operational point of view and we do all of the processing and support how to operate the system. We, we teach them how to operate the system. In the implementation, what we do is designate a resource of the bank, let's say a technical account manager, where he helps to do the operation and integration of the core of the portfolio with the processor in technological support we are on top of how to handle the account portfolio how to do the processing the functionalities the payment the web services how to monitor them how how to generate data how to do the accounting balances and anything else that they want to do, let's say marketing uh, topics that are not included in the system, but then we try to work it with them to see how we can implement it. There are cooperatives that have already gone into production and what they want to do is to have their associates to be able to buy in December, but pay in February or March. So this is for them a new topic and we're working on that. We're also providing support for the operation. We train the people on how to distribute plastics, how to do dispute management how to work with MasterCard and clearing and compensation. Uh, we generate compensation through the cooperative and we have to teach them how to do that clearing and compensation process. We do all of the activation and the life cycle of the cards the payment means or methods of payment, either physical or digital, from the time when it was originated, how to allow the customer to use it, how to keep the customer updated on their payments, how to help them when they want to cancel the card. These are all strategies from the operation perspective and from the marketing perspective that we teach them how to use and the processing and support part. We help them to configure the processing at the core. We uh, are monitoring the evolution, how they work with the portfolios. This is a subject related to volume. What we want is for them to have strategies that allow them to be competitive with the banks, to generate strategies that help them generate more consumption. And the more the consumer uses the card, they'll be able to receive interbanking fees. In Colombia, an issuer is receiving 1.15% of the amount of the purchase, and that could be used as leverage for the transactional cost of the cooperative. And they could um, generate revenues from there, being able to compensate their costs. Uh, right now, what we have is 17, 27 uh, entities in credit cards that we're 
now implementing three are in production. These are three cooperatives. One of them is support. It's the uh, employee fund of the central bank. The other one is a credit cooperative and Progresa, which is a savings and lending cooperative. We have 17 e-wallet uh, that have debit cards and also savings products of the 17. Three are in production. One is Epaga and the other one is Efecti. And we have also Claro Pay. So Claro decided to go into the new bank world and it is doing it through Cop Central, the bank. And so with Claro, we created an e-wallet called Claro Pay. We have two institutions or two banks that want us to become the sponsor bank for Visa and MasterCard and three banks who are uh, members or principals of Visa, but who want to use this for the operation of their transactions. So this is what we're doing, trying to, to combat the post-COVID issues. We know that this will be long-term. We know that talking about post-COVID is really far into the future. We have to learn how to live with that. And the only way out is the digital way to have all of the interactions become digital payments, banking and financial payments. I was uh, listening to uh, news from Facebook that said that they were going to evolve into a meta reality topic where you're going to be able to come in through a virtual reality into a 100% digital world where you could visit the malls or the banks or parks without leaving your home or your room, actually. So this is the revolution of the methods or means of payment, the banking revolution. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. And if you have any question, I'm ready to answer them. Muchas gracias, Ronny. Thank you very much, Ronny, for this uh, very important, interesting, and detailed presentation. Um, we are a little bit short on time, unfortunately. Um, as uh, Sparks um, normally are uh, short capsules of, of 30 minutes. However, I think that, please don't hesitate, we have time for two, three questions. So, por favor, si ustedes tienen preguntas, ponla. So, please, if you have any questions, please chat. Uh, write them on the chat. Um, and we already have one question written in Spanish from Raúl coming from Canada, Desjardins. Uh, ¿Qué recomendación pueden dar en base a su experiencia sobre el desafío en Colombia de la brecha entre conectividad y brecha digital entre las áreas rurales y urbanas? Bueno, el, el, el gobierno colombiano está trabajando muy fuerte. It's working a lot, uh, trying to close the connectivity gap. Unfortunately, and I don't know if you've heard the news, but there was a, an issue of corruption, a quite strong one. There were more or less $70 million destined to connectivity of the rural areas, which have not materialized and we don't, no one really knows what's happened. So we're doing, we're trying to close that gap and we're leveraging ourselves with USAID in a subject of correspondent, banking correspondence, but doing it digitally we're doing it also with Claro, with the Claro e-wallet and with Effecti, but this connectivity gap and 
the digital gap between the rural and urban areas has affected us in Colombia, even though more or less there's 90% of connectivity in the rural areas. That little bit that's still missing are the most critical areas of the country, the ones where there's more violence and conflict. So with the USAID and with the cooperatives, we want to reach them and to, and, and that's why we're generating the strategies to close the gap. Muchas gracias. Muy interesante. Buena Thank pregunta. you. This is really interesting. It's a good question. Someone else has another question for Rony today? Otras preguntas? I, I might have a, a question for you, Roni, to close today. Indeed, um, you said that your digital is the future and there is no other choice than go through it. And we see how expensive you have been in developing and making sure that you are um, ready for, for the future, for the digital future. Uh, you also said that you keep some physical offices in order to still be able to attend your traditional um, uh, membership base and, and, and clients. Um, how do you um, decline, define the cooperative values and your cooperative uh, reason of being digitally? How do you manage to, to, to also provide and make the difference with your members? Is this something that you are developing also? This is a subject that is under study. Right now we're in a generational change. The cooperative sector is uh, has to do a lot with relationships of being close to each other, being very personalized. So what the digital issues and, and the pandemics have, have done is to keep us apart, to to try to do everything individually. The only connection we have uh, with our friends is, is digital. So we're trying to preserve the offices because of those relationship uh, topics. And the changes in values could be done as uh, there's a uh, a change in the generations when there is a generational cha change in in cooperatives we will see a change in the way to cooperate and in the way to act or in the way they act what is important is to keep this uh, cooperation uh, and uh, unite jo the joining of forces and not only in cooperativism, but or in the solitary sector, but as human beings, if we get together and uh, do it in cooperation, we can really achieve great things. Unfortunately, that relationship or or that very intimate subject of the people in the solitary sector has been affected. You see it in the different boards. Uh, of directors of the cooperatives because they they really feel very strongly and uh, not having lunch together or not being together and this has really uh, hit the relationship uh, matters or topics this uh, answer and also direction to to think to think in the future how we want to keep this important uh, important values and uh, reason of being. Uh, by this, I suggest that to close the session of today, to everyone present, you will be receiving the presentation of Honey in Spanish and in English. Um, and of course, uh, you will also see Honey's contact details. Don't hesitate to contact him. Like him directly should you want to pursue exchanges with him or have more specific questions for Honey. 
Thank you very much, everyone, for attending today. And see you in November with our German member, the Z Bank. Thank you and bye bye.